What's up YouTube, it's Sidor here with Tasty Tracker, and today I'm going to do another small account challenge update for the 2021 account. Um, and just as a quick reminder, if you could follow me on Twitter and Discord. On Twitter I post charts daily, and I also post all position changes in real time, um, at least for this account. And then I have a pro Twitter handle for all of the uh, position modifications on the pro accounts um, that I have. So if, if you're not familiar with my, my website, um, there's the free half, which you can use to share your trades, track your trades. Um, if you don't want to share, you don't have to. Um, but then there's the pro half, which then you get my alerts and a couple other nice features. Um, so anyway, uh, the Twitter is where I do most of my real-time activity. I'm also in Discord all day. Um, casually chatting there um i'm not uh, i don't have a voice chat or anything there but if you're following there you'll stay up to date on the account without these videos um but uh, obviously i do intend to do these videos uh, from time to time uh, i last week i was um through this weekend i was uh at another property out of town town so uh wasn't able to make videos anyway so let's jump right into this um, the account has been hovering between 950 up here, um, where it started out the day, and then, you know, down here at the 880 kind of range, um, 870. Uh, and, and obviously that's unfortunate, you know, um, if we can get up to a thousand, that's what we started, uh, off our, uh, challenge with. So that's great. Um, and, and I have no doubt that we, we will get there. I still think a lot of these positions are completely fine. But, uh, and I'll go over that in a second. Um, but uh, in a larger account, say $5,000, you're going to potentially have $1,000 sitting around in cash. So over these last two weeks, I would have put positions on. Um, as we're falling down here, I'm going to slowly be adding positions. And so that when we get this bounce up, then I'm going to be even more profitable on those and they'll close out earlier whereas the positions i put on back here um i obviously we have to wait till it gets up to this level again before they're even going to be breaking even so you know that's less than ideal um this isn't nearly as bad as the COVID crash so i'm not concerned there uh but at the moment i only have 166 dollars of buying power so it's not really enough to do anything meaningfully um, so yeah, so if we look at the total return for these positions, uh, that's how much I'm down overall, $200 on the plug, Tesla, $163, and, and so, you know, I had a couple questions uh, from people, should they still be entering these positions, and the answer is no, um, you should be putting them out, if you're just entering now, you should be putting them out for the April expiration, and you may or may not be able to choose better strikes. I would choose um, better sp strikes for these. Uh, again, my target is around 40% in the money, or 60% chance of profit, depending on the platform you're on. Um, you can also use Delta as an equivalent, something like a 30 Delta. Um, but but those are where I'm targeting the positions. The other way, um, the other information I'm pulling in to uh, determine what strikes I'm getting is looking at the supports. So obviously these SMA lines, the 20 day, 50 day and 100 day are important, uh, as well as these horizontal supports. So right here, you can see that at 380, there's a pretty good uh, support and resistance. Back here, it acted as resistance. Um, then it, right here, it acted as resistance, a bit of support here, and then support here again. And it just so happens that the 50-day is there right now. So um, as somebody that's into charting, this is not um, a coincidence. This is the way it is because people are behaving by the same set of rules. So if they see 380 as support or resistance, then they're going to treat it as such. And when the entire market is doing that, then that's going to create your bounce, okay? Um, this is for SPY, but but anyway, uh, that applies to all of these, okay? So let's get into plug. Uh, I sold the 60 leg. Okay. So right now we can see we're at 50, the uh, yellow line is up here at 60, and then I put the expiration up here. So to me, to have um, 
you know, something like that happen is very possible, especially when considering MACD and RSI are so oversold. Um, to me, it's got a pretty good, excuse me, chance that we could pop up here um, relatively quickly. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to follow these lines. Obviously, if you get a move like this, um, even if it was just one of these jumps, um, then in you know, one to three days, we could eat very easily be above the $60 mark. Um, if we get into here uh, about the week before expiration, so somewhere around, yeah, I guess it would be uh, beginning of next week. So we'll see how this week pans out. Um, but around the 8th, if, uh, if things aren't looking better, um, like maybe we're around this range, then it might be a uh, potential that we just roll it out uh, to the next expiration. Um, that might be the most appropriate move. But at this point, uh, I'm holding out hope that things are oversold enough that we'll get a nice bump here. And especially when we cross over the 50 day in SMA, those will give it a boost and that should be enough to put us up over. So in conclusion, not doing anything for that at the moment. I've got, uh, let's go over to the, Positions page. I've got 17 days for this to work out, um, so so definitely uh, definitely possible. Tesla is the one um, that is a bit on the cusp. So that is the uh, 785, and we have 24 days to get there. So yeah, okay. So here we are again with the gold line had to be above in this quadrant here. And again, that is e extremely possible to do before expiration. Now this one isn't on a monthly, this one is on a weekly. So that's why we have 24 days. So it gives us a little bit extra time. If you put it on for the monthly, then I would look at rolling at this point. But again, the 50 day and the 20 day are right here. So if we have a green candle and we can get up in here um, for one day and then the next day, we should be able to shoot over um, and be profitable. When we're getting close to this expiration, especially if it's hovering right around being profitable or not, it's not a bad idea to change the closing order from a 50% closing order to a 25% closing order. So we're going to walk away with less profit um, but uh, it should hit that quicker, obviously, than a 50%. Uh, the only caveat there is, as we're getting closer to expiration, the price is going to whip around a lot because there's not much extrinsic value left. And so uh, the position is really determining whether it's going to be worthless or full value. So um, as it's getting closer, you'll see, so right at the money, will retain their value pretty well, but the further out you go out of the money, um, it, it definitely loses value very, very quickly. So, um, so there is a chance that even if it pops up for a couple minutes, we could get a close at 25% very easily on a larger account. Um, I might be risky enough to leave those positions on, uh, and try to, to get more money. Uh, depending on how much risk I have in that account at that point in time. But with this being a smaller account, um, I, I have a rolling video uh, case study that I'll actually be releasing tomorrow at Market Open um, or 8 a.m. I think it's scheduled. Um, but it basically, I'm rolling this for a dollar and I walk you through how to create a rolling order in Robinhood. Um, so yeah, so the odds of that one getting up there is, is possible. It's on the cusp for me. Uh, I'll give it the rest of the week. Um, but, uh, and I have that working order out there, like I said, but if, um, if the rest of the week isn't fruitful, then I'll just kind of, um, proact or, or be more proactive in forcing the role to happen right now. It's just sitting out there for a dollar credit. Uh, which it won't fill for that. It'll right now it's like thirty dollar debit, something like that. Okay, so the next one is Microsoft, and I sold the two forty. Okay, so again, gold line, gold line needs to be above it. Right now we're sitting, um, you know, at two thirty seven, uh, two thirty five. Sorry, two thirty five thirty two, and. Um, yeah, so we're five dollars off. Uh, to me, that is so close; it's not even worth talking about, really. Um, MACD RSI again, 
uh, both curling up, weak red volume today, market is down in general. So anything you do today is going to be for a worse value than if you do it tomorrow, uh, assuming tomorrow is green, obviously. Um, but if the market is up tomorrow, you'll get better credit for rolling, you get better credit for closing. So you don't want to force things too much, especially on a down day, especially if you have time yet. So, um, but in any case, this to me looks like we have plenty of time. We're right there um, to get up here. And again, um, this is so far out that I wouldn't even adjust the 50% closing order. I would just leave it. But but if you're inclined, you can definitely, uh, you know, set it for 25 and, and then walk away from the position. And, and that's fine. So last one is Qualcomm. Uh, we sold the 140. Okay. And right now we're sitting at 138.90. So a dollar and 10 cents. Um, again, totally not worth discussing. And this is why we go with a 40% in the money um, or a safer uh, strike to give us that cushion. It's safer. Yes, we collect less premium, but it's still enough to make our make it worth our time but uh, it gives us a bit of a wiggle room so i put this one on on 212 back here and so we were trading the whole way up um in this range uh you know another ten dollars higher right and so by um, placing it down eight dollars i gave myself eight dollars of cushion and yes it overshot that a little bit but the odds that it comes up above that line by next monthly cycle um, is very very high uh, especially when apple apple and Qual uh, qualcomm trade together a lot of times i always mistype apple and both of them are looking like they're curling up um this chart's kind of messy at the moment. Let's go ahead and clear that. Okay, so I'm going to draw. Uh, I don't have a position in Apple, but because they trade together, it's important to um, just stay educated about both of them. Um, right, so something like that, and then something like that could be a realistic channel, um, or we could go something like that. Um, and none of this is ever 100% precise, obviously. Um, it's just you're kind of eyeballing it to be the um, the best possible fit. But anyway, uh, similar here, we're, we're coming up on the 50 and 20 day SMAs. And uh, because these are so tight, um, if these come down, the crossing above it would be a bullish sign and that will give it some juice, um, which I think we could get up to 140 pretty easily. I don't have a expiration here, so let's put that on April 16th. There we go. And that was the, oh, that's why, because I don't actually have a position on this one. All right, so let's go back to Qualcomm. Uh, but yeah, my point is uh, we're very, very close, and so I'm not worried about that position. Okay, so uh, Siri, um, I think, what what was I? Yeah, I'm up one, one cent. Uh, I got the stock when it was worth um, 603. No, that's not right. Um, what did they give it to me for originally? I'd have to go back and check. Anyway, um, let's do it this way. So I got this somewhere in the beginning of January, somewhere at this point, 594. Okay, so yeah. So I'm up, uh, you know, 10 cents. Um, and the only reason I bring that up is uh, just for a little bit of perspective here. We were up $400. Uh, I realize we're not anymore. Um, uh, yeah, up to $14.19 was our high. So um, I fully expect that we'll get back up there and actually rather shortly. But um, but it is just, uh, you know, one of those things. This is this is part of the game. So if I go back to home here, I can see that I haven't done anything um, yet this month. Obviously, we're only two days in. But last month we made three three thirty seven. And so it is important to track your account over here, uh, the current value. Um, this is a paper uh, paper gain or loss. 
Right. Whereas this is actual. So I'm more concerned with actual. If things keep moving in the right direction over here, this can do whatever it wants. You know, if I'm continually month after month making profit, um, then that's fine with me. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's it. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And otherwise, I'll leave it there. Thanks.